If there's one thing I've learned about the great state of Nevada, the more you explore it, the better it gets. I mean, just look at this. This is Lamoille Canyon in the Great Ruby Mountains. And better yet, your cell phone doesn't work here. How great is that? There is plenty to see and do around here, and I got just the guy to show us around. Hey Joe, how long you been in this line of work? I've been doing this for a little over 20 years. Is it as, as great as it seems? Look at my office. <laughs> I mean, I'm a conservation educator for the Nevada Department of Wildlife, and I bring kids up here to teach them about wildlife. What, what, what more could you ask for? Uh, nothing, <laughs> uh, except that you, you also live in these parts, I don't do, you? I do, I live 20 minutes from here. And what is that like? Uh, Unfortunately, you sort of sometimes start to take it for granted. I have these mountains in my backdrop and I go sit on the back patio and, and grill a steak and watch the sunset and day after day. I mean. You are killing me. <laughs> Joe, let's talk elevation. What about the mountains and where we are right now? So the highest peak is Ruby Dome. It's 11,387 feet, just under 11.4. Um, we're probably right around 7,000 feet, maybe a little above and then you go over Liberty Pass and you get up around 8,500, 9,000 feet. What are some of the things to do in oh. this area? Oh, um, all sorts of stuff. Bird watching is huge here. Lots of birds in the area. In fact, it's the only place in the Western Hemisphere you can find Himalayan snowcock. Wow. And we have people come from all over the United States, Europe. They come here to come get, find it. It's on their life list. So bird watching is great. Um, photography, as you can see, it, it, it lends itself beautifully to photography. And these aspens around us turn a really bright gold in the fall. Um, you've got fishing, look at this beautiful creek. You've got wildlife watching, you've got lots of different varieties of wildlife all through the area. There's um, got to be hiking, camping. Yeah, yeah hiking. All Tell of me about that. Stuff. Yeah. So um, at the end of this road, which you can see right up there where the snow is, that's one end of the Ruby Crest Trail. It's a 43 mile long trail that runs along the, the crest of the spine of the mountains and it ends up in Harrison Pass. Um, the views are incredible. When you get up top, you can see 50, 75 miles in any direction. The, the stars at night are brighter than any nightlight. <laughs> it is incredible. Now this looks like a happy landscape. Tell me about the water. So you look at the water here and, and what happens is in, in Nevada, water's very much an elevational thing. So we're the driest state in the country, seven and a half inches of rain statewide. Okay, in the town of Elko, which we're outside of right now, 10 and a half inches. At the top up there, 50 inches of precip. So what happens is you have this water melting and coming down. Um, this area was originally carved by a glacier. And then when you get animals like beavers in and they build these great beaver dams, it slows the water down, it provides habitat. As you saw earlier, we had two mallards up there. They probably have a nest close by or getting ready to nest. And this provides habitat for just a myriad of wildlife. Um, obviously, you've got trout in here. Um, you've got all sorts of small animals, marmots, uh, rodents, everything all through here. Mule deer, they all rely on this. And we call beaver meadow makers because what happens is they dam it up. This water flows really fast until it hits a dam. It slows down, it drops the, you know, the, the minerals and rock that it's been eroding off. And then when it gets mixed with the organic material from the plants, it becomes soil that grows things and it turns into a meadow. This was probably much steeper like this at one point, and now is a level meadow that is used by wildlife. This great brush zone is perfect for a, a whole bunch of different animals. Nature is amazing. It is it? amazing. Oh, it's better than anything man could do. Tell me more about the beavers. Do, do they, how long do these dams last? These dams will last for years. However, on a really heavy snow year, they, will, they could get blown out when the flows are really high. Then the beavers sit there and they work they work continuously and they rebuild them back up. And um, so, so they will do this all the time. In fact, a beaver has to be chewing on wood almost all the time because their teeth have been developed. 
It grows so fast that if they aren't continually wearing them down, it'll actually grow into their jaw bones and then they can't eat. Wow. So it's <laughs> so a necessity to It's to a be necessity busy. and they are busy. Busy as a beaver is <laughs> truly a good word. And it's fun. I've been up here fishing in a couple of these areas and you're wading and fishing to have a beaver swim by is really cool. Really? Yeah. It's do, they, a little... do they eat fish? No, beaver eat plants. They actually love the bark and they love the, the leaves. And so when they're cutting the trees down, what they're doing is they're trying to get to the top of the tree where the tenderest shoots are. And so that's what they're doing. And then they're using the rest of it to build their dams and they're hauling it down. And then they'll have a couple of, of young, which are called kits. And then when the kits get a certain age, the parents kick them out and they move up or downstream and then they start their own beaver dam. There was a study done where if you took all the little tributaries of the Colorado River and got beavers back into where they all used to be, they would hold as much water back in those little tribs as is what's in Lake Mead behind Hoover Dam. No kidding, yes. that's amazing. <laughs> Now you love this, don't you? I mean, Absolutely. Why do you, why do you love this so much? Why not? <laughs> Look at my office. Um, I, I like sharing my knowledge and 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 teaching people about things. You know, kids nowadays are so tied into their phones or computers, that kind of stuff. You get them out here. Like you said earlier, there is no cell service here. Uh, my granddaughters who live with me, we get them up here and they're doing like this, and I make them put their phones away, and then they forget about them and have fun. And the, you know, the fresh air, the exercise, the sun. It just is a great place to raise people and, 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 and animals. And it, you get values that, you know, sometimes you lose. You know, it's like anything. If you get overcrowded, you change, your, change how you work. Well, it's interesting you say that because I come out here and this is world class beauty and there aren't a lot of people out here. <laughs> yes, so. uh, shows like this, sometimes the locals don't always like because it tells Sorry them about, about that. It. That's all right, but why wouldn't you want to share it? And, and it is world class. Um, it's actually called the Yosemite of Nevada by a lot of people. And you've just got everything you need here. And unlike Yosemite, it's not crowded. It's not crowded. Now, I've heard you know a little something about fishing. A little bit. What do you want to know? I want to know how to catch one. Can you, can you help me with that today? I can tell you how to fish. I can't necessarily guarantee we're going to catch one, but we can try. And I got a place we can take you to that'll be perfect for you this. You got the spot? I got the spot. Let's go. Okay.